Hello and welcome to the Study Travel News video. I'm Matthew Knott. And I'm Nicola Hancock, bringing you the latest news stories. Um, so, the headlines this week. Uh, UK launches international education strategy and growth plans. Consolidation in 2018 for Malta's ELT sector. Um, and growth continues for Brazilian agents. And much more in a very busy week. So let's crack on with some UK growth targets then. Yes, um, the UK is aiming to host 600,000 international higher education students by 2030 as part of its new international education strategy and wants to grow the value of education exports across all sectors to £35 billion, a 75% increase over 2016 levels. The strategy was published by the Education Secretary Damien Hines and the International Trade Secretary Liam Fox and includes measures such as post-study periods of six months, rising to a year for PhD students and the ability to switch to a skilled work visa from home up to two years after graduation. Other aspects of the strategy include funding through the Great Campaign, an international education champion and improved data. Professor Dame Janet Beer, President of Universities UK, welcomed the targets as a change in direction but called for longer post-study work periods. Dr Nick Hillman, Director of the Higher Education Policy Institute, said growth in exports of 4% per year was modest and that the Home Office would need to fully endorse the strategy for it to succeed. Sarah Cooper, Executive Director of English UK, however, welcomed the recognition of the ELT sector in the strategy and a more holistic view of the industry. Hey, uh, Malta next, where the ELT industry consolidated in 2018 after a record peak the previous year, welcoming just over 87,000 students. There was, however, a decline in student weeks due to the average stay falling from 2.8 weeks in 2017 to 2.5 last year. The top three markets, Italy, Germany and France, all sent fewer students last year, but this was balanced by increases from elsewhere, notably Russia, Japan, Ukraine, Slovakia and Sweden. Uh, James Perry, Executive Director of ELT Association Feltham, praised schools for working to balance the nationality mix. He said Feltham's priority was working with non-EU markets to increase longer stay students. A nice link here because James was at the ST Alfie Brazil uh, conference last week where Brazilian Agency Association Belta unveiled the preliminary findings of its annual sector research, which showed that almost three quarters of agencies increased business in 2018. Yeah, very good. Uh, yes, Malta was one of the destinations that increased market share actually, but Canada, the USA and the UK remain the top three. There were noticeable, noticeable increases for undergraduate and postgraduate programs for Brazilian agencies as well. Full results will follow later in the year. And now for a roundup of some of the other stories. Challenges for the boarding school sector, the forthcoming review of national minimum standards for boarding schools, working with agents and best practice in safeguarding were among the themes at a UK conference hosted by the Boarding Schools Association or BSA and the Association for the Education and Guardianship of International Students or AGIS. See Matt here's report online. Uh, the Australian government has announced that international students attending regional universities will get an extra year on the post-study work visa as part of a new scheme to balance population growth. There will also be a range of scholarships for regional study. The Federation of Education and Language Consultant Associations, or FELCA, has launched a new website. Marileo, president of FELCA, told ST Magazine that she hoped the website would help to show the importance of FELCA and its member associations. Um, and staying with agency associations, the International Association of Language Centres, or EALC, has, an, has signed MOUs with um, Annex and AMTE, the national agency bodies of Colombia and Mexico. The aforementioned Higher Education Policy Institute has released a report with Kaplan International Pathways and London Economics claiming that the international students from the 2016-17 cohort that remain to work will contribute more than £3.1 billion to the government in income tax, VAT and national insurance contributions across 10 years. Wow. Um, the eight universities in New Zealand recruited around half of their international students through agents in 2017 according to the latest benchmarking survey for the sector. And New Zealand-based ACG Education has entered the Australian market through a new pathway partnership with the University of Tasmania. More on all of those stories on our website, of course, as well as photos from Alfie Brazil, um, a first ever regional meeting of Latin American agency associations and BBSW. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye. Thank you.